On to a developing story this morning. The deadly violence in Sudan is hitting close to home with roughly 16,000 Americans still trapped in the African nation. The deadly violence is showing no sign of slowing down and foreign governments are now evacuating diplomats, including many Americans. CBS News' John Diaz joins us live from the newsroom with more on how the U.S. is responding. John? Yeah, Chris Mary, good morning, both of you. Well, it's estimated roughly 100 Americans have been rescued from undisclosed locations since the fighting began. Now, the violence has left more than 400 people dead and almost 4,000 hurt. Many they fear the country could be falling into a devastating civil war. It is a nightmare. It is a nightmare. Osama Mustafa is a New York based Sudanese activist who hasn't been able to contact his father, sister, and brother in law in days who are in Sudan. The silence is agonizing since he knows people there are running out of food, water, and even medical supplies. They were so scared to get out of the house, so they left everything in the house. Uh, the communication, the cell phones. Uh, so right now, I am really, in the, you know, I lost them. The Sudan conflict between two rival generals began earlier this month. The World Health Organization says the violent attacks so far have killed more than 400 people, including one U.S. citizen. Meanwhile, the U.S. military successfully evacuated American government employees over the weekend from their embassy in the capital of Sudan, Khartoum. Heavily armed fighters from the feared Rapid Support Force paramilitary group were seen racing towards the city. President Biden says he's receiving regular reports from his team and is working closely with allies and other partners to get more Americans out of Sudan. France and the UK are doing the same. We continue to work directly and through our international partners to call for a ceasefire and an end to this violence. Now it's thought that most Americans still trapped in Sudan are dual nationals. While efforts are still underway to evacuate as many as possible, the U.S. Embassy and airports are closed, so the hope of them coming home soon is fading. Chris, Mary. John Diaz, John, thank you.